Hello and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Word with Evangelist Kevin Wagner and myself, Joshua Wagner, and we are continuing our series through the book of Acts, beginning right now with Acts chapter 27 and verse 13. Now, Paul has begun his journey to Rome via ship, and we're going to see that just as he predicted by means of the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, they're going to run into some trouble here. So, mm -hmm. uh, Dad, why don't you uh, <clears throat> read for us Acts 27, verses 13 through 20. Sure. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted, so they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so... We gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. When the men had hoisted it aboard, they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together. Fearing that they would run aground on the sandbars of Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Okay, so, uh, you know, Luke is detailing the encounter that they're having here in the midst of this storm, which is prophesied by Paul. And, um, you know, a lot of technical terms, a lot of geographical locations that help to give credence to the authenticity of this story. Um, it, it sort of, you know, reminds you of almost a movie, you know, like the Swiss Family Robinson being shipwrecked or yeah. Robinson Crusoe being shipwrecked. Yeah. Like it, it's, uh, it's clearly uh, something that is significant that is taking place here. And it's interesting there in that final verse, it says, when neither sun nor stars had appeared for yeah. many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Now, as we're going to see here, uh, I would say that that we does not include the Apostle Paul. Uh, it would include even Luke, who's writing this, and certainly the, the crew and most of those on the ship. Uh, Paul, though, he keeps the faith hmm. through it all. Amen. And uh, we're going to see that. But even the, the believers who are traveling with Paul are fearful that they're going to die. And I think it's noteworthy to see that sort of perspective, even from these, you know, Bible-believing and faith-filled men. Uh, and it, sh it speaks to how significant of a storm this was. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Dad, why don't you now read verses 21 through 26. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of the God whom, whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, <laughs> we must run aground on some island. <laughs> okay, so uh, these the men on the ship uh, have become depressed, um, certain of their own de death. Yeah. Uh, they're not eating. They are uh, so anxious. And, you know, Paul basically says, hey, not to say I told you so, but actually I did tell you yeah. that this was going to happen. However, um, and, and he says that not just to rub it in. No. But he says it to provide authenticity to his words. Well, he's connecting the dots for these pagan uh, sailors. He's ma helping them understand yeah. that, uh, look, the, the God whose I am, to use his own words, whose I am and whom I serve, the one true God, yeah. not your pagan gods, the one true God, he already told me a while ago, a few days ago, that this was going to happen. Because mm -hmm. he lives in the future just as he lives in the present. Yeah. And he... he, he isn't you know he, he knows all of this and now you should listen to him 
You didn't listen to me, him through me first, but now you have a chance to listen to him again and put your faith and trust in him. Hmm. Because now he's saying something different. Yes, the ship will be destroyed because this awful storm that I knew was going to happen is happening now. Yeah. But I am going to graciously save you and give you another chance to believe and trust in me and my word. And he's also trying to help them understand like now they can see, okay, this guy is right. When he yeah. predicts something, mm -hmm. it's going to come to pass. And he does that. So sort of like, hey, here's, here's the veracity of my work. So now when I say this next thing, you can believe it. Yeah. You can trust it. And the next thing is good news, guys. Um, yeah. The ship's going to be destroyed, but nobody's going to die. That's right. God has promised that uh, he's going to take care of all of you. And that's, of course, you know, emblematic of the character of God that, uh, you know, this, this storm came and the devil sends many storms. But, you know, if God's given the choice between saving a ship or saving a person, I'll always save the person. Of you know course. I mean? like, yeah. like God cares about people. Yeah. He's going to use his efforts um, to, to do that. Um, and then I think it's also, you know, we should also see here, you know, Paul is also using this as an opportunity really to share the gospel. Amen. Like he's trying in the, yeah. in this moment mm -hmm. of <clears throat> difficulty, these, these men are facing death. They feel like they are, um, you know, maybe going to be meeting their maker soon enough. Paul's using this time to really communicate the gospel. To well, them. that's why he's connecting the dots, Josh, mm -hmm. is he's he trying to help them understand that this is the one true God that we're talking about. He was right the first time. And he's also showing them the cost of <coughs> disobedience. Guys, those of you watching, you know, it's like there's always a cost to disobeying the word of God. And there that is. cost may come quickly or come down the road, but there's always a cost. For yeah. these sailors, the cost is they lose their ship. Yeah. They're completely uh, filled with anxiety. Yeah. And, uh, and now it's, he says in the last verse, nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Yeah. Like, they're not going to get through this unscathed. No. So the best thing to do in your life, those of you watching, is to just obey the word of God. Amen. The, obey the Bible, for sure, the written word, and obey the word of God as spoken through godly people to you, uh, you know, as God speaks through them prophetically, and speaks to your heart directly even. Remember that nothing that, if something, someone says something to you that's from the, that they say is from the Lord, or if you feel like you're getting something from the Lord and it contradicts the Bible, obviously that's not true. We understand. It's from the devil or from your flesh or from the world. Yeah. But, you know, you, you know, you test the spirits, but to see if they're from God, the Bible says, but yes, obey the word of God. Listen to what's sin and don't do it. Listen to what's righteousness and do it. And then you're not going to have to suffer these consequences of disobeying the word like these sailors did. It's interesting. Um, it said that Paul received this message of the certainty of their uh, salvation from an angel. Yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. and this is a good reminder for us that God has ministering spirits Amen. that we call angels that he uses yeah. to communicate messages so, and and various other jobs different angels have different jobs mm -hmm. you know michael is sure. described as a warrior angel he's a he's a uh, an angel who does fighting spiritually speaking and uh, but then you've got other angels like gabriel who is a messenger angel mm -hmm. and so what does gabriel do he's giving messages to mary he's giving messages to joseph and he's He's uh, providing this courier system between God and his people. Right. And, um, and so here's a messenger angel mm -hmm. who's been dispatched from heaven uh, with a message of encouragement for Paul. Yeah, sometimes you have the Holy Spirit speak to you directly. Sometimes right. God sends an angel to do it. Um, there are seraphs and cherubs that are other classes and orders of angels that are worship angels yep. uh, in heaven before the throne of God. But you're right, Josh, absolutely. And um, now, the angel's message also here says, do not be afraid, Paul. So even Paul in this situation, um, while he knew what was happening and, and, and everything, he still, you know, in the natural, you'd still be fearful. You're in the midst of this 
you know, multiple day storm. Mm -hmm. You've been promised that you're about to be shipwrecked. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th there's natural concerns there. And yet in the midst of it, of course, as Jesus often has done um, in the midst of storms, he says, you know, don't be afraid. Uh, trust in me. I am with you. You need not be afraid. You know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow mm -hmm. of death. Uh, so you will walk yeah. through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. But you need not fear. That's right. For, for God is with you. Um, you know, another thing, Dad, here is that encapsulated in this encouragement to Paul from the angel is not just an assurance of their salvation and the salvation of all of those on the ship, but is this promise of him standing trial before <laughs> Caesar. That's what it's been all about the last few chapters, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, you know, we don't, and we've said this before, but we don't see Paul in the book of Acts or anywhere in the Bible as, you know, recorded that he did stand before Caesar. Right. But uh, church history does uh, tell us that he, he was able to do this. And we should have no doubt that he did it because whether we have church history to back that up or not, because God prophesies it right here. Well, and the witness of Paul did get into <laughs> Caesar's household because he does it's say true. in Philippians that that the, the word of God was penetrating into the very household of Caesar. Yep. So, I mean, whether Paul got to directly speak to Caesar or not, we know that the ears of Caesar would and the heart of Caesar would have had the opportunity to repent and be saved yeah. through the word of Paul. Absolutely. So that's a, a, a fun and exciting thing for Paul just to continue to look forward to. Amen. Um, it's also noteworthy, you know, it says God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail mm -hmm. with you. We see this as sort of association. Mm -hmm. um, th th why are the people, why are all of these pagan men on the ship saved when they were given an opportunity already and they rejected it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, it's because they are with Paul. Yeah. And, and there is a benefit that can, that comes by sort, you know, you've heard the term guilty by association. Well, you also can be blessed by association. Amen. And there is a benefit that comes to uh, people who are even associated with yeah. the man of God. You know, Lot himself received great blessing in his life, not because of things he had done, but because, but because Abraham, of Abraham. His uncle. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and so we see this happen uh, various times throughout the scriptures. Exactly. And here it's like these men are saved. They must be thrilled that the the Paul is on their boat of all the boats that they could be on because yes. the reality is without him they're lost yeah. there's no chance that they have here uh, sort of the reverse of Jonah the guys on Jonah's boat 100% they're experiencing the storms <laughs> because of Jonah yeah and yet these guys they're experiencing the salvation uh, from the storm because of Paul thank you for bringing that up I was gonna say that too <clears throat> and you did a great job of, of doing that. And because notice what was happening. Jonah was the reluctant evangelist. Yeah. He was taking a ship to go away from God's will. Yeah. He was supposed to go to Nineveh. He went in the opposite direction towards Tarshish. That's right. Um, and Paul, on the other hand, is taking a ship towards God's will. Right. And and so that's where you want to be. Amen. You're, you want to be the enthusiastic evangelist, the enthusiastic soul winner. God's place to call in your life for many wonderful things, people for you to interact with and get saved and yeah. bless and, and pray for their healing. And uh, so you want to run in that direction. Amen. Just like Paul was doing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Dad, one last thing here. You know, it says, uh, verse 25, so keep up your courage, man, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told hmm. me. You know, uh, this reminds me of, I mean, so many throughout the scriptures. But, uh, you know, think about Abraham, you know, who held on. Paul talking about Abraham in Romans 4, you know, says, not wavering in his Amen. belief in the promise of God to Amen. be fulfilled. You know, there is a, um, there is an assurance. There is a unwavering faith that Paul has in the promise of God, in the word of God. Keep your courage. Why? For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me, that every detail will come to pass, that no word of God shall falter, that heaven and earth will disappear, but his words will never disappear, that we can hold confidently to the word of God and to the rhema words that God does yep. speak to us in our lives, just as we see here in Paul's situation. And the thing is, folks, some of you know us personally, some of you don't. I can tell you this is what Josh is saying is 
what he is doing with his family and I'm doing with my family right now. We've been doing it our whole lives. Yeah. I mean, at least for me, I guess it was, you know, when I, Jesus became real to me at 17, but since then I've been doing it. Josh has been doing it his whole life. Like, I mean, this isn't just something we're asking you to do. No, we're saying this works. Amen. The word of God works. Amen. Amen. Uh, are there sometimes storms in our life, like in Paul's life? Yeah, there are. But you just stand on the word. Stand on the word. You trust what the Holy Spirit tells you, what an angel tells you that God sends. That's right. You trust what the Bible tells you. That's right. Yeah, and God has has been very faithful uh, with us because that's His character. It's His nature. He mm -hmm. is faithful. He knows to how to do no nothing else. Mm -hmm. And um, and if He's been faithful in the past, that becomes an yeah. anchor for us to hold on to in the midst of whatever current situation you may find yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, to remind yourselves of the goodness of God, of how God has been faithful in the past. And if he has done it before, he will do it again. Hallelujah. That's and right. So we thank God for that. We thank the thank God for the example of the Apostle Paul in the midst of a literal storm to hold fast to the word of God. And we know that if he did it for Paul, he'll do it for you. And that is what's in the word.